I'm doing something that's that's probably one of the most magical parts of filmmaking is basically being there in front of a you know 90 or 100 piece orchestra and then and then hearing come to life what you've what, what you've written. When you create something that was unexpected, that wasn't scripted or wasn't or or, or surprises people, of course that that's fulfilling. If someone is a major has a major through line in the story, then they they, they get their, they get a theme. Like in uh, in this in this particular movie, X Men: Days of Future Past, Charles Xavier gets a theme which he never had before because this whole movie is really about um, about his arc as a as a character in the 70s, where he's a, sort of a messed up guy who's lost all of his hope. You abandoned me. You took her away, and you abandoned me. It's about. Logan helping him rekindle that hope again. So I compose it so that it could it could morph into something hopeful in the end. I know what I have to do. It's us with them. I actually changed the music for her. Um, she had a, a little motif in, in X Men Two, um, uh, Mystique, uh, but but X Men Two didn't really revolve around Raven, which is her non mutant form, and and that's the conflicted character. It's da 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 da. -da. That's all it is. It's going to take the two of us. Side by side at the time when we couldn't be further apart. His is basically, you wanted something really simple so that later, when you keep hearing that thing, you, you, you relate it subliminally uh, to Magneto. I'm a big believer in pushing home motifs and themes because as a filmmaker, it's something that helps clarify the story, it helps clarify a character for me. So if, if they hear something over and over, they're not really realizing they're listening to it. Frankly, if we do our job really well, no one hears a thing.